Hello everybody, welcome to the official live cast of Diamed vs Jonesy Group M Round 1 match. Um, as you can see these are both pretty light and grey colours. So we're going to switch this to red and blue to more easily see who is who. Um, a little bit of background on the coaches, Diomed of course is Russian, he qualified via the Season 4 playoffs. Um, he was actually top of ladder as well, um, he's an incredible blood bowler, he finished second in the Season 2 finals in January and uh, he also finished second in the Blood Bowl Super League um, to a very handsome man who beat him in the final I must say. And uh, yeah, he's honestly Diomed's great, maybe the best player in the world right now. Uh, up against Jonesy, who is German and qualified through DBBL, the uh, Deutsche Blood Bowl Liga. There you go. So um, we've got Jonesy here. He's got three dodge blitzers and a tackle blitzer. I really don't like the tackle blitzer. I, what I think in this kind of format, you want to be asking questions rather than looking for answers. And this is my problem with all tackles. I feel like... You know, you want to be asking questions, not trying to find answers. And I think tackles an answer. And yes, you do need answers, but uh, you know, you've you've got two you've got two frenzy players here. If this tackle is a wrestle witch or a block witch, then you're getting more hits with frenzy. And that's doing nearly as good job while giving more defense to a positional. So I would personally never ever take a tackler like this. And even then, I'd rather just have dodge right if the option was for the sixth skill on one of the good positionals. He's also gone for a bad position, which is a runner, but the reason he's gone for that is to give him the leader to get him to three rerolls, and three rerolls in an apo is very good. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a few variations with Dark Elves because they don't quite get what they need. Um, Diomed has gone for a rather unusual build, um, which is the One Wolf build, which I believe Bright has also gone, is a fellow Russian Bright, also a very good player. So yeah, only one wolf, and he's also exposed him with this uh, with this perfect, well not perfect, him, solid defense. So this gives him a bit more, you know, kind of reliability, if you like, with 13 players and three re-rolls. But all he's really getting is the 13th player, isn't it? Um, though it is it is a ghoul, right? But then, <laughs> but then he's losing a wolf, so it's... He's got two ghouls, but only one wolf, rather than two wolves or one ghoul. He gets more blodge and rodge, but it seems a little bit... Like, it's more durable, so he's got 13 instead of 12, so it's more reliable that way. But it's a, it's a also a little bit more brittle, isn't it? Because you've got less... Um, like, if you compare this to, like, say, Andy Davos build, they've both got two fleshies with guard, they've both got two wraiths with guard, and then Davos got a block ghoul and two block wolves. So we're swapping a block wolf for a wrestle ghoul, and that is definitely a downgrade on pitch. Well, is it definitely? Maybe not, right? Because having a having a blodge or a rodge player is really good. Um, so you know, maybe it's not actually a downgrade. The thing is, you can only blitz with one wolf, right? So if you look after the wolf, one wolf is arguably better. But the thing is, um, the thing is, oh my, we just opened the one day here. Don't know why he didn't just dodge away. I'd have just dodged them all. I wouldn't have even, yeah, I wouldn't have even thought about blocking. Just dodge everyone away. Because now he's just going to get hit a few times, isn't he? Oh! He's just let this guy get surfed. Not what I would have done. I mean, he might not surf him, but... Because he's, he's got to put, he's got to put the ghoul to here. And he's got to try and protect him with the other and it might not be worth it so maybe this was an intentional bait maybe this is an intentional bait yeah I, I love four guards I think you have to go four guards I really do like four guards um, I think that's I think that's the best I can understand going more you know going more um, block if you if you struggle more against the agility teams but oh well he doesn't get surfed anyway I guess the other alternative is he could have pushed him twice and then he could have uh, gone one, two, three, four, rush to surf him. But 
It was a bit awkward. It was a bit of a commitment. It was a lot of a commitment to do that surf. So yeah, so this makes this is harder to play with one wolf, right? You really have to protect the wolf at all costs. So it's kind of more brittle than the um, than the two wolf build because obviously wolves have regen. Ghouls never pass their regen ever. Um, I've never seen a ghoul regen in my life, so you know that's a bad thing about ghouls. And yeah, okay, they have got blodge, so they're kind of harder to knock over. But they are AV eight plus instead of AV nine plus, so they they do leave the field easier. And don't regen, so it's it's a weird it's a weird build. It is a weird build. It, it's it's somehow a bit more consistent yet a bit more brittle at the same time. I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. Oh, it's interesting. Does he eat this? He might not want to. Because he's putting on so much pressure this turn that's hard to deal with unless he leaves a gaping hole. Which this will. I wonder if he should have blocked with this zombie. Then he could have accepted the 1 in 9, right? Gets of power. I, I don't think it feels right, fine to eat. The way he's played the rest of the turn, he's putting a lot of pressure on. And uh, if he'd if he'd if he'd sculled out there, then you can blitz this guy and then dodge the whole team through, and you're away from the pressure, and uh, sold everything. So I think already Diamed is thinking he's going to end this half one nil up, right? I think that's what he's playing for, and that's what he's playing for here with this very very aggressive start, going for a very aggressive start, and then sculling out that fleshy would have been pretty bad. Yeah, I, th I think you, he could have eaten. I think he could have eaten the zombie, a zombie, if that had been the zombie. So maybe he should have blocked with the zombie, right? Because then, then he could have eaten it. Right. Well. Now we can calm down because, you know, got to think for a little bit here. This is a lot to think about. Very, uh, very tricky turn. I say very tricky, you can just dodge everything back, right? Just roll some twos and be quite happy. He could also run around and hit the wolf. And be quite happy about that as well. Can't reach the wrestle wolf. Can, the wrestle can he three, four, five, six, seven? Yeah, he can't reach him, but he could. He could hit the wolf. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's not gonna. Can go for a full X cage. to one dodge skill makes it succeed yeah. Daka looks pretty good at this point doesn't it because he's having to just dodge every single player away nearly okay so we are going to try and hit the wolf here yeah. a one it doesn't snake doesn't get the knockdown. Could surf <laughs> this lineman now. Ah, oh, but he gets the 3 2 away to have a deep threat. Maybe he should have done that 2 plus first. I don't think he will surf this lineman, but he obviously could, right? It's an easy surf. But. Maybe he will. Maybe maybe he'll just surf and like reset. Maybe he'll keep chasing the elves. Yeah. 
Who knows? Uh, yeah, slight, sl slight spoilers is uh, Diamond just won the cup, the Chalice Cup with uh, Necromantic yesterday. So he is the current CCL champ. That look that looks like he's cooling the pressure off, right? The fact that he took the pal and followed, like you'd have just bolt downed if you Oh no, it's so we could get this flashy in. So we might be just be going for the surf here. I think we have to now. <laughs> Don't get it diced. Absolute comedy mega. How's the level of competition in CCL? Um, don't know. I mean, there's. There's still a few people playing in Chalice. I don't know. I don't know what the actual ladder is like because I don't really play the ladder. Um, SR makes it a pointless grind. Inf a pointless infinite grind. So I don't play. <laughs> um, I was a bit unlucky, wasn't it? One in nine there, and uh, did choose to not reroll this time after reroll the first time. Because this isn't completely destroying his position like the other one kind of did. I don't really think it would have been a very good no. No, Aoyeti. If he could have chained a fleshy in to get two dice on the ball, yes. But I think a 1D, when there's loads of Dark Elves around, I think just go for the Surf is probably better. Ah, well... Blood Bowl 3 has a ladder where you can just play like, you know, one team with progression and, uh, well, you can play it several teams. You play a team and you progress and, like, you know, it gets SPPs and stuff and then you spin into random, like, you know, match up against random players um, and you're matched with SR. It's basically like ELO. It's basically like ELO, right? Like, um, your rating goes up if you buy more, if you beat bad players and uh, goes down again more if you lose against bad players and goes up less if you beat bad players and uh, goes down less if you lose to good players right so like like elo if you know what elo is it's like elo basically um, and you have a different sr per team so what that means is you just play forever and uh and ever and ever and ever and ever and just seem pointless and rubbish <laughs> so yeah well, that was a nice blitz and a removal. He doesn't have a lot with him if he wants to come up this way. I guess he can block here, can't he? And then come around to there. This isn't wonderful, but if he gets the pow, it's pretty good, isn't it? If he gets the pow, it's pretty good. If he gets the push, it's going to be, or well, the both down, it's going to be a bit hairy. Like, it's not bad. It's He's still an elf, right? You can probably just put it up here or something and be all right. I don't know where he's going to go. Just in there, in there. Lots of places he can go, isn't it? At the end of the day, he's an elf. He'll probably be all right. I 
I mean, you don't even need to infinite randoms. You just need to not care about... You, there's just no reason to care about the games. That's the problem. Like, you know, you're just playing to build your team because eventually the SR will sort itself out, right? Like, that's kind of the way it do works, right? Like, at the end of the day, there's no need to care whether you're winning or losing because eventually you will win the right amount, you know? What, no matter what your level is, eventually you will kind of like get to that level. So there's no stress about caring about the games. You just build your players up and just, just kind of learn. Ooh, so this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, he can come out of there, can't he? He's not moving that yet, though. Is he going to punch him? Oh, I hate ending the turn. Dodge this guy out all day. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a three plus to one day. Now a three plus to one day doesn't seem so bad because you're so out of position. Now, you might not want to one day here, you know, but I, again, I would try to not leave it on because he might want to do it, and it's not that bad for him, is it? Three plus five plus. Uh, the Blitz was over here somewhere. He, he uh, cast a zombie that region. Or do you mean Blitzing with that Wraith? Maybe. Might just wolf it, right? Might just wolf it, but he's got two people behind him now, which is not good. He's got no pressure on the cage, which isn't good. So, you know, that, that bolt down from the, from the fleshy was pretty bad, because that is exactly where... Jonesy went through. You know, good turn from him. Yeah, so the one day on the ball does look better when when that you know when they don't have block. But yeah, you're just going for the get the get the wolf bang in. I mean, you don't even need to lose, though, Christopher B. Like, you just need to not... The best system is to just not care, right? Like, you don't need to purposely build and lose on purpose. You don't need to random and build on purpose. It, unfortunately, the existence of SR just makes it... Just be a mess. Yeah, progression makes matching worse anyway, but it's just hard to care. That the the main thing is the is the lack of caring about SR. I feel like SR just encourages um, apathy. Well, it's, there's not infinite. They, they do have a uh, team value cap from season to season. So, um, so you know, some seasons it's sixteen, some teams it's seventeen hundred, sometimes it's sometimes it's eighteen hundred. So it depends on the TV cap as to which teams will be, be the strongest. But um, yeah, this season orcs are the best because the dribbles not yet. I don't know why people hate it. I mean, you, you, so the conceding, you should hate on it if it's so much that you can't play the game, right? Like, if every time somebody loses the toss, they concede. That's pretty bad, right? If 90% if of games end in a first turn concession, that's pretty bad. Like, frivolous conceding, very bad. Like, to that kind of... I mean, imagine if 99% of games were conceded on the toss. That would make it an unplayable game, right? So... You know, you'd have to spin a hundred times to get a game. It would be rubbish. That would, that would kind of kill the game. So you, you don't want that. But I think people hyper-focus uh, hyper on it unnecessarily, yeah. So of course the doors open a little bit, right? The doors not open, it's left ajar by this zombie being the only thing holding 
this flank and that's where he already is so yeah I would imagine he's gonna push down here it's not super easy to get past necrom necromantic and uh... oh it's a rush and he makes it and he gets the power of course what he could have done Move the bolt to here first as the assist, and then blitz with the witch or bony with wrestle, and then he would have uh, he would have been okay. But now he can get a bit further with the witch. But he's going to have to rely on dodging this guy or this guy and stuff. And there's going to be a few dodges, and he didn't follow there, and now he's surfable, and this is all a bit scary. Uh, the shadows. I have the um, I have the set graphical settings very low, um, including shadows, so that the game is a bit cleaner. Otherwise, it's like it's basically like the pitch that should be the background is like too is like hyper in focus and looks like the foreground. So. By reducing all the details on it, I have managed to give the illusion of it being in the background. <laughs> so that is why the shadows aren't the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah conceding dead uh, blitz is fine. Um, I will after the game. Pogler, is that okay? It's it's just most of them are low, right? Like most of the uh, most of the things are low. Don't want to miss the game from doing it. I'll end the YouTube video and then I'll show you. But uh, it's mostly low. In fact, I can make a little YouTube video saying these are my settings because. Uh, Because I feel like mine looks better than most people streaming it. They tend to look too dark and uh, too detailed. Speaking of details, got Old World Alliance. No, what are these? I thought they had a pig head. They've got beers. Is this a different one? These are the brutal cheerleaders. For Jonesy, Diamond's gone these. Beers. Are, th are these All World Alliance? I thought they had like pig's heads for some reason. It's a pretty strong cage anyway, isn't it? Jonesy rolled all the dice that turn. And uh, Diamond has made his wolf blitz, but... Only got a stun, and he can get some stuff back, but not really enough. Not really enough. Yeah, I think it's the bottom five low. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> he didn't dodge with a ball carrier, to be fair, did he? But yeah, there, there was a rush that if it had failed, it would have completely exposed the ball and lost him the game. And there was another one. So he probably made this turn. He probably succeeded as many critical dodges as I failed in my match. So yeah, thanks, Dimmy. Thanks for mentioning that. It's always good to mention how unlucky I am. <laughs> no, but you know, in terms of the game... I was actually really lucky with the kickoff, wasn't I, and the uh, kickoff event. I have covered SR, literally, they were just talking about it. Thanks, Dimmy. You're a fun guy. Doesn't re roll. Also, doesn't die. Incredible. So, yeah, turn five now, we should be able to completely turn the corner here, I would imagine, Jonesy. 
But you know, there's still going to be critical one in 36s. Everything's based. So. <laughs> Hello, Plo. Yeah, I'll never forget that game versus Dimmy, the looker dog. <laughs> We haven't had that yet, no, Dimmy. I end the YouTube videos before I do that, so it's all right. We just never, we just never see the summary screen. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't think we'll see an early score. I think we'll just turn the corner and then stall out for a few turns. Is the plan? It's like it's actually hard to get past them, right? With them having stand firm and sidestep, it's actually hard to get past them. So I'm totally fine as L's getting past the necro when I have the chance. And then once I've passed them, then I can, you know, stall past them. <laughs> but the big thing is is just getting past the fleshies and past the wraiths. Oof, only a push. You might have to think about the early score now, because this is uh, the prone Wraith, means he's got like double dodge with this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which isn't great, is it? This guy's got a dodge without dodge. I mean, he can kind of do it, but it's not, it's not great. This guy can't go anywhere without getting served, so we'd have to go up, so we might just go for the double rush score and lose 2-1. So he did a dodge and a rush instead of just a dodge here, so he really is trying to... Maybe he's going to 3-2 this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So he's going to get the full X cage there. And I guess he's going to 3 2, or he's going to 2 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 2 again. If he doesn't want to get surfed. Oh, he can go there and not get surfed. That's better, isn't it? Dumb. Dumb man Jim. That was obviously the place to go, so yep, yeah, well done, Jonesy. Idiot Jim. Eats this one. <laughs> Hello Pedro. I am in the World Cup. I am here. I'm playing on Saturday, in fact. Versus Kellathorn. And hopefully winning. Yeah, I thought this is where we go with that. I, I'd blitz this guy here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This, this is a new bug, by the way. It just keeps... It keeps this player's movement active even when he moves on from him. This is the player, right? So then that gives you the wolf blitz and I've got a wolf in front. Yeah, that's really nice. That gets you the wolf hit, and you try and get back as much as you can. Try and stop and stall. Let's take the pound. Or we need to go for the push. He's still 75% of the game down afterwards. He probably wants to take the push and then get the power afterwards. But just takes the knockdown. Beggars can't be choosers. Oh, that 
that's unlucky. Well, if you're not going to re-roll that hit, then maybe you don't. Maybe you move this guy back first, eh? Maybe. What he really wanted to do was get the pow, and then this fleshy could like come in here, right? And then and then that stops. You, then you do this block, and then all of these three can't dodge out in two plus. But right now, we've got two two plus dodge outs. Well, three. But then they're a double two plus, but that's okay, right? Because you've got dodge on these two. So at the moment, this this was a real big fail. Now he's got this guy up, this guy up, and these two can get out very easily. So, let's see what he does. Still got a few turns to stall. Super interesting. Only gets a push. Is he gonna blitz this guy now? No, he blitzes the wolf. Only gets a push. He might have three two out with this blitzer, might he? Rather than like one, two, three, four, and nowhere. So now he could three, two. Oh he just gets the score. Okay. Well, that might be enough for Diamond. Two rerolls, three turns. That might be enough. I mean, I don't know about easily, but I think I would have definitely. Well, the thing is, right? Scoring, this is a very good point made by Diamond. And not by Diamond, Dionysian. Um, scoring on turn six is better than scoring on turn seven. Because now, Jonesy has a counter-scoring threat, right? So if you don't think you can score, stall two more turns, then really stalling one turn more is worse. Whereas now, you can you know get a couple of scoring threats in on his turn seven, and then Diamed has to think about that, rather than just you know going 110% you know, reckless to get the touchdown himself. So, you know, that's the thing. If you don't think you can stall till turn eight, as an elf team, turn six is better. Well, you know, to an extent, it's not necessarily better because obviously it's also easier to score in three turns than it is in two. So it's not like 100% better, but there is a bonus to scoring on turn six rather than seven. Dionysian is not back playing. Oh, a timeout. Well, now it's a lot easier in four. So, yeah, now, now the not stalling looks, <laughs> looks definitely bad.
But yeah, I was just trying to say it wasn't. It wasn't definitely wrong. But now, after the fact, it looks a bit more wrong, doesn't it? Absolute world of difference between four turns and three turns. Yeah, I like the fleshy in there. Yeah, he does need to remove some players. It's uh, it's very difficult if you don't. I like the trapping the LOS here though. That was quite nice, wasn't it? Is he gonna go forward? Yeah. So now we definitely won't see a foul because he has to hold as wide as possible. Yeah, he would have pretty much had to reroll the fail pick up yeah, the I mean just just the fact he's got a score in four turns means that he's almost got to. No, I'd like to have stayed a little bit wider there. Because I feel like the elves definitely want to send at least one person around the side to get in scoring range. Like he's happy just to dodge everybody back. I say everybody. <laughs> Ooh, stand similar, but I don't like that. Really like those two staying down. Because like with where your screen is, that puts them in like a really awkward part of the pitch, right? So I definitely would have just let those guys lie down oh wow wow he's rolling all the dice to get the this is a bit when he did this formation I thought he was just gonna one dice the the zombie because, you know, this is ridiculously weak now. But I guess by tagging the ball... Uh, he needed a power though, didn't he? So he's got a rush. Yeah, so he either has to blitz him. Which means he then he can't blitz forward. But I guess that's okay, right? Risking the one in nine looks terrible, so I guess you've just got to blitz this guy off and uh, consolidate around the center. Maybe just standing up to get blockless blocked is all right. You know, we've already seen uh, we've already seen Diamond fail a few blockless blocks. One in nine is a somewhat regular occurrence. Mmm. Now that is super interesting, isn't it?
He steal my dices. That's a single. He does re-roll it and he gets the knockdown. And he gets the stun. Yeah, I quite like the reroll there. And he gets the 3D on this guy. He can also chain the fleshy forward. That's quite nice, isn't it? And he blocks with the fleshy. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, I really don't like that. I hate it. I hate it. I loved chaining the fleshy forward into an extra block. Get your fleshy out in front, maybe powers the blitzer. Gave you follow up hits as well, like it was so much better blocking with that guy. Maybe the failure state was worse. I guess that was that was it was marginally worse failure state, but I mean it's three dice, isn't it? So yeah, I feel like that block was way better. Like if you power him, you can even follow up, right? And then it's great. Maybe he just tunnel visioned and didn't didn't see it. Kinda of committed to this screening, isn't he? Is it, he's just gonna go back to that. Yeah, that's a good point. Diamond already down to three minutes and Jonesy two. That is a fireworks, yep. Yep. This is very weak, isn't it, that side now, because this time he couldn't base it. Well, maybe he can base the ball. So maybe he dodges for a 1D blitz on that zombie. The other alternate that he had was he could have based this fleshy and then blitzed the fleshy with either the witch or the... Uh, well, probably the witch, right? So I think that was probably his best bet. Dodge this guy back to here. Blitz with the witch so you had like more chances to knock him over. And then come back here. And then... You would have had these guys holding this. But in the fleshy down, but now now we've definitely got a uh a gaping hole, isn't it, on a push? Just needs a push and it's a gaping hole. A gaping hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, the, yeah, he should have at least been there, because this just I mean I would have actually blitzed the uh Blitzer, I think. Because that, like, lets you get, like, deeper through, right? But this, this, like, gets you further away, which is good. 
but this lets you get deeper which is also good but I, this is higher odds to break through isn't it because he hasn't got blocks so maybe this was just the correct blitz versus non-block so now I can just make a cage like there right full cage Yep, he can get there. He gets in. Ooh, I thought he would have gone that. Oh, no, because he's got Gardenich Cole with it now. I mean, it could have been the other way, though. I think it would have been better the other way. Uh, maybe not, because he wants to protect the... He wants to protect the wolf, doesn't he? Rather than having a better cage, I guess. They're pretty annoying, aren't they, the fireworks? So you look at it. Sometimes this just stays on after he's activated. Very annoying. Oh, here we go. Rush foul. Not. Jeez, it's really loud. I could turn my lights up and have a look. <laughs> I'm a little bit tempted. Uh, no, he did a 1D block. Also, I'd have just blitzed the fleshy. I think the, the play was to blitz the fleshy. He didn't blitz the fleshy and barely had a screen. And, yep, that was it. Yep, left weak point. The fireworks are really close, that's why they're so loud. They look pretty cool, though. Yep. Yes, I thought it was a super bad idea as well. Indeed. I like blitzing the fleshy down on it. He could have he would have had a bit of a formation by blitzing the fleshy. Like the two the two assists would have made a bit of a kit, bit of a formation. And uh Yeah, he didn't even re-roll the both down, did he? He just accepted the both down, yeah. And just left a really weak screen. Hasn't tried to three plus this guy out either, right? That could have gone last. One, two, three, rush, rush. So I think, I think he's asking a lot for this to be good enough. I think the blitz was needed to do the good screen because the fleshy was in the way of a good screen. So you might as well blitz him and knock down the fleshy, <laughs> which is good. Oh, he puts tackle on the ball. Oh. Wow, Le Peg, living in the world where you can make two one in thirty six as well. I wish I lived in that world, but then then it would have seemed an okay idea. Yes. Uh, you can put the mummies on the line, yeah, you can in that situation, Ginger Badger, if that's what you want to do. Yep. It is complicated to play elves, yes, Lepeg. Yes, it is. Oh no, the timer bug. 
This is actually tricky, isn't it? This was a... Well, I say it's tricky. It's not tricky. It's easy. You just hand off and blitz this guy and score. Um, it's tricky to do it better than that. It's tricky to do it better than that. A blockless block and a three plus, two plus. I think it's a two plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, a three, two with a reroll. I mean, this this witch elf should be one called one over, right? Really weird that the witch elf wasn't one over. I'm sure she could have been, she was like only here. Does the handoff? Just a two plus to score. Go one one. Wow. Still eleven dark elves. And a diamond Wraith does not regen no, does not regen does not wake up from the KO, so Diamond is down, you know, T V on the pitch here. So it's, it's not over, it's not simple. Elves can do things. Very much still a game. I wonder if he'll go for a surf or not. No, he can't, can he, without a quick snap? He could have set up for a quick snap serve. He could have set up for a quick snap serve. But he didn't. I would have probably set up for the quick snap serve. He's only got one wolf, hasn't he? But he could have um he could have blocked in there, pushed, pushed. And then, so that so if he if he got the if he got the quick snap, he could have had a player here who quick snaps to there. And the Fletcher could have come in here and he could have pushed it there, pushed it there. And then quick snapped him off. So you have got to worry when you do that. That's why I put my uh, my lineman here in the uh, chevrons, so that if if you get quick snap frenzy served, at least it's just a lineman. Nah, definitely not. Absolutely not, Cosmigo. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely right to score with a two plus to make. If he didn't have to rush, then yes, but he had to rush. It's, it's not unlikely, right? It's not unlikely to just pick up the ball first time. Sure hands, probably the most overrated skill in the entire game. <laughs> yes, I mean, it certainly happens sometimes. It certainly happens sometimes. Oh, yeah, we just realised the surf would have been on there. I wonder if he's going to try and dodge the LOS off, maybe. Cause like he can get them off this time, right? Because last half they were they were trapped. I mean, last drive was really good actually. I thought I know the way he trapped them. This time they're up. If he if he dodges all three, it's pretty great. 
So I'd probably try to dodge all three and just be in like a dominant position. At least this takes two players to punch him, right? Like, if this guy hadn't dodged, he would have just got instantly 2D'd with block. Whereas this is two players who make a blockless block, so at least this is a higher commitment to hit this guy with more chance of failure. Could uh, suck out a reroll. I don't think there's any chance of Diamond going for a flank this early. He just has to punch and uh, punch and punch and punch and you know hopefully get up players. Maybe foul this guy. Think about fouling because he is down on quality. He's got to get a certain amount of luck to win this game, but. I think you know you could just hope the weight of blocks is going to do it for you. Play it safe and get weight of blocks to get you the victory. So this non-dodge, what is that? What is the result? It's a removed elf. He does apple it. He did, yes, he did prove he can score with no removals, but, uh, you know, it's hard, right? It's hard. It was, and it was also like those, those linemen were trapped on the LOS and this time they haven't been. But yeah, I mean, I think, I think Jones should have dodged that guy out, right? And obviously, um, you know, obviously after he'd made that removal in the app all day, it looks obvious, but I didn't think taking two zombies actions up on turn two was worth taking the hit, right? different if it's on turn 8 uh, not turn 16 in this case um, like turn 8 of the drive taking up 2 zombies actions to punch something, really good but on turn 2, what else are they going to be doing, you know like they're fine just punching things so yeah Very aggressive. I guess he's going to blitz the flashy. Oh, he's just going. He's just going all in. Here we go. This sure looks like no. Okay, we're going for the ball uphill into a 1D. Oh my god, the power in the second hit gets the wrestle. Oof. Do you know what? Funny enough, I would have pushed him to here. If I was going to do this, I would have gone 3, 4, 5. Uh, was it 3, 4, 5, 6, right? I'd have put this. Lyman here, and I would have pushed him to there, and then tried to push him out to the corner, right, on the second hit. Would have really liked that. And then, because if it's on that corner, then maybe a witch can get it right there, whereas out the back here, it's just a bit too far to it for anybody to get it. But yeah, it was still a very lucky scatter for Diamond, but uh, I feel like it would have been a little bit better to have gone outwards this way and then get the final power here I mean he was going to get the final power here right which his plan was to get the final power here but I would have liked gone for the final power there um, but yeah just went straight in for the uphill in, into one that was that was pretty rowdy pretty rowdy wall sack and he gets the 3-2 with the uh Blitz it to tie up the wolf. So he's got, you know, he's got lots of things based here, but this could be a make or break turn now, couldn't it? If if Diamond gets good dice, 
and makes the correct decisions this turn, it's going to be pretty easy for him. If he uh, gets bad dice or makes bad decisions, then this is how you lose to the the likes of Crystal Hunter and Inarian and Olivia Dulac, right? Those kind of players. This is how they get you, they, these kind of turns. It actually wasn't quite as aggressive as uh, as Crystal Hunter or Olivia Dulac, but it was that kind of style of turn, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure he's going to be firing the witch, yes. Yes, I'm pretty certain of that fact. <laughs> Because you basically have to, uh, you have to just pick up and cage next to it, right? He's already shown his desire to uphill you, and it's his only wrestler. It's the only, you know, number one way he's going to sack you. So even gets the pal there. So what's this going to be? A three, four, five assist foul. Only snakes it doesn't get you the break. Plus, obviously, failed pickup makes the pickup. Really nice, wasn't it? The fact that he made the dodge with a break as well gets the guard there to keep it keep things. Really nice. Oh, he doesn't move the other zombie in first. Oh, I would have moved in the other zombie as well. Gets the removal, gets sent off. Doesn't argue the call. But, you know, the wrestle's gone. So, that's that's a trade. You'll take all days, Diamond, there, I think. After, after he's gone in once, you know, he's going to keep trying to go in and get you. So, taking it out is very nice. And yeah, it just leaves you the proper cage. Yeah, I would have, uh, I would have, however, moved this player down one to have a uh, not a cross one, isn't it? The, the witch. Where was the witch? Where was the witch? <laughs> it was. Was the witch here? It was, wasn't it? Yeah, four assists. Could it, it could have been down one, right? Uh, I guess it was stopping the assists here, but he's still getting two deed. So, I guess he's tagging two players, isn't he, with the don't have dodge. So yeah, that is a good square for him, actually. Yeah, maybe it was better not to assist with him as well. Oh, one in nine, rough. One dice pal with the tackler. Into a removal. Flip me. That's a little bit annoying for Diamond. Less annoying with the witch gone, but still. He could foul the fleshy here. <laughs> I actually don't hate the fleshy foul now, right? It's high rolly. It's what most people would call the wrong move. But if it works and you remove a fleshy at this point, you become like a massive favourite to score. To like win 2 1, right? Like you actually become like kind of a pretty big favourite too. One, funnily enough, if he'd rolled those dice on the foul, he would have stunned the fleshy, and uh, you know would have been pretty good. I think they are Daythwin because they're based off the blue, the like Blood Bowl three Citadel miniatures, right? So they are pretty samey, and it 
there's things that maybe it wouldn't translate to the, you know a video game as well as it does on tabletop and you don't really have that option if you're just choosing to copy the miniatures oh wow that was a huge block wasn't it a huge block funnily enough the lack of uh the lack of dodge resulted in the knockdown um and he did power the he did power that uh <laughs> ghoul anyway Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a very good point, Shandy. The, yeah, they weren't great in the ball too. There's definitely an element of getting used to it for sure. But like some of the things that you know they could do in Blood Bowl two, I guess they can't in Blood Bowl three. So maybe there is some kind. Of, you know, maybe there are some issues with that. This doesn't look easy at all, does it? He's got so few players now, Diamond. Even though he's removed two himself, the fact that he's got nine and he's missing one of his edge threes, he's only got two edge threes, he doesn't really have any kind of cage here. This is a bit of a pickle. Down at two minutes in his time bank. Jonesy's down to 28 seconds, so Jonesy needs to pick up the pace significantly. Yes, that's true. They are the, they are both sackers, aren't they? They've been removed. Yeah, the tackle and the wrestle. So, the two primary ways to get hits on the ball have been removed. Man. I really just want to uphill the fleshy here. <laughs> and then if it works... That's a 1D even, yeah. Yeah, 1D, yeah, you have to then, yeah. I like the 1D there. Because 50% of the time, that just unlocks everything else, doesn't it? So, yeah, I really like that. Can't really re-roll it, unfortunately. I don't like the blitz straight after. If, I feel that Jonesy should have played uh, Pro Elves, honestly, with the, the base of the ball every turn. I think what I would have done is, after that, dodge this guy, oh, well, this guy, this girl out. 1D this guy, push him there. And then you can... Uh, okay, I mean, this looks way better than that. Then you can uphill this guy to chain him back, and then you can get a 1D on the ball. But, I mean, this is just way better, isn't it? Just blitz him and cas him. Yeah. It's way better. Actually, wouldn't have done any of that. But it's something you could have done. <laughs> the way he's played is more what I expected than just doing that punch. He's been pretty, uh, pretty aggressive going for the ball this drive. Kind of expected it to continue. But switching gears a little bit. Yeah, I don't think so, Shan. But I think you've got to play like the... You've got to adapt to the situation, haven't you? Yep, that's that's a big problem, isn't it? It's a big problem. He's basically got six zombies on the pitch. Two of them are strength four with guard, but they're basically zombies. And he's against nine elves. So yeah, this is a problem. This is a big problem. Um, I think like a couple of people have used it all up. One person has definitely fully run out of time, uh, like during a turn. I think maybe other people have like used up their time bank, but they're not run out. But mostly people have like realised, oh no, I have to start playing faster, and then haven't used it up. Yeah, this is now. This is a big problem, isn't it? This is a big problem for Diamond. He's looking at the loss. This is looking very scary. This is where he's got to play a little bit like Truk did versus me. 
and you know just battle to stay alive I think and try and get out 1-1 one, one. problem if the ghoul hightails out of there he just gets he just gets knocked over you know like, he just rests there you don't, don't wrestle with him you just witch him four dice to power him well it looks like he might be doing that I don't know I don't know, Jeff. Still not sure what the plan is this turn. Yeah, this is a big problem, isn't it? This is a big problem losing two wraiths and, a, and the ghoul. Blockless blitz. That kind of break is maybe better, like later, right? So that they get one chance to get you. The wolf is still there, yeah. That's true. Basically making an eye cage around the guards. Removal. Lovely news for Diamond. So eight aside now. But it is. It is eight elves versus six zombies. <laughs> Although strength, strength four zombies, but still. You can just blitz the wolf here, right? You can just blitz the wolf and uh, he's in a lot of trouble. Instantly kill the wolf. I mean, it is a hundred million percent blitzing the wolf, isn't it? There's no, uh, there's no coaching going on there. Yep, instant pow. This even gets your guy off of the fleshy as well into the assist. Like that is a dream blitz, isn't it? Everything about that blitz was just perfect. Absolutely glorious blitz. Oh man, he's basing the ball again. He loves it. Loves the ball basing. I'd like this style a lot more if, like, Diamed was out of re-rolls. This still feels like you could let him off the hook by basing so much if he rolls well. You know, like he did last turn. With him. Oh, another removal! Flip me! Now he'll be wishing he followed. He really wants to move up here to take this punch, but you just can't afford to let him out for free. In fact, you probably just want to tag this guy in the corner as well. Bet he really wishes he'd followed now. That that removal was amazing. 28 seconds, just end the turn. Oh no, he's moved away from the wolf! He's moved away from the wolf! Oh, oh no. It's much more important to keep the wolf tag than the zombie. Oh no, I wouldn't have done that. Like I was right about he wished he'd followed, right? Because he want that guy tag, but you, I don't think you can give up the wolf tag to do it. Full pals. This is the problem by just keep basing with them. Oh yeah, time time bank panic is a definitely a real thing. Much realer thing than turn four panic. Gets the knockdown there as well. Problem is like the fleshy blitz is a bit rubbish because he ain't got block, has he? So 
Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They're taking up less time now. But he could blitz with a ghoul or a wolf somehow. Ah, I really didn't like letting the like. Yeah, this is what I would have done. I really didn't like letting the ghoul up. The uh, wolf up. Sorry, that was. I think that was a bad move. I'd go so far as it was a bad move. I'd have like tagged him from here as well, I think. So you've still had like a full length screen there. Stun was a little bit unlucky, of course. But now the ghoul, you know, last turn the ghoul would have just been caught by the witch elf, whereas now. He can kind of run away, but the, I mean, he still can be caught by the Witch Elf. But I guess much less likely. I'll put that, I'll put it next to him. Skulls out, re rolls it, skulls out. Removes himself. Can this guy get in, in front of the ghoul? He can. He can double rush to get in front of the ghoul. And then it'll be a 3-2 two to two dice the ghoul into one. Or he could rush as well, right? So he could, he could double rush and then single rush and then he could two into two blitz. Yep, this seems to be the play. But imagine if he hadn't let the imagine if he hadn't let the wolf up, this zombie would have gone like one, two, three, four, and we'd really done nothing. And this wolf would have been trapped. Would have just had a four plus dodge out. I think he had to do the rush with that guy as well. If you'd done the rush with him, it would have been 2 into 2. At the moment, it's a 2 into 1. So I think you had to do this rush as well. <laughs> I hate to be, you know, brilliant at Blood Bowl, but... That rush would have made this a 2 into 2. I mean, you can't really re if you can't re-roll this. If you're going to re-roll this, you should re-roll the two D on him, right? And this guy didn't really do anything. <laughs> I guess I let him push it that direction. But the ghoul is just in range. Yep. Yeah. Stacked him. Fails. Wow, what a game. <laughs> Necro absolutely banged out. I think we just do the dodge double rush, right? That's it, and then at least you draw 2-2. Two, two. This seems so horrible. Oh, he rushes to 2D. I'm not sure that's better, honestly. Like, the failure state's better. You've still got the ball and a blodger. But the chance you use the reroll before the uh, two pluses is pretty annoying. But I guess at least if you fail down there, you're closer to his end zone and away from yours. Wow. And uh, he gets two out of four KOs back and a regen back. So he's actually up to 10 players. And Jones only has two turns and one reroll. But it is possible, isn't it? He doesn't have his runner to help, so it's not too possible, honestly. Dark Elves. The throwing nerf has really made. Two turns a lot harder, hasn't it? Yes, maybe, Christopher B, yeah. Yeah. Do 
Yes, just dodging is just obviously a higher percentage. Well, no, it isn't. Is it a higher? Let's see which was more likely to work. I'll sambar it for you. The pure odds of scoring there. So Diamond's play was 82.876 and Dodging was 82.305. <laughs> so it was half a percent better and probably the failure state was better. So there you go. Good decision, Diamond. It was very close though, wasn't it? My instinct was dodge was better. And he did, he did the uh, zombie blitz pretty quickly, didn't he? So I don't know if that's just something he knew or he figured in the failure state part of it as well. Yes, it was a 2 plus 2D compared to a dodge. And then like 2 GFIs anyway. Dodge was not better though, was it? <laughs> I mean, the, well, so the dodge play is is sixty one percent to use a team reroll. Sorry, to succeed without the team reroll. Um, I don't know what the chance of using the reroll is. I guess you're about fifty percent to use the reroll doing it. Diamed's way because everything's re-rollable. So you're about 50%, whereas 10% of that, you're about 50-50 either way actually. Oh, you know. You've got to be less likely to use the team re-roll doing it the other way. But I don't know if like you're 40 or 30% to use the re-roll. Oh, you're 30% to use the re-roll, aren't you? But it's got to be less than 30%. You've got to be less than 30% to use the reroll doing the dodge. Whereas you've got 50% to use the reroll doing it Diamond's way. The ball is back here. Which elf carrier, by the way, is terrible because it's got PA5+. Plus, so it should not be carrying. Doesn't doesn't power him, but he's got two dodges to three two the way through. Rush. You've got to have them next to each other because of the wolf. You can't just submit. So maybe you rush that they're not next to each other. But fit. using a using a reroll on this rush seems horrible. So I guess you just dodge this guy through and uh, have them next to each other, which is also terrible. Or do this guy at the end and then rush with him at the end. Oh, it's, he's not done a handoff. So. I guess he's got to rush to screen the witch. Sorry, dodge to screen the witch, dodge there. So he's here we go, what's he going to do with him? Double rush? Or just stand there? Single rush. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush. So the problem with this rush forward is she can't hand off to him. This guy's in range, but can get punched. This guy's not in range. Oh, well, I think I know exactly what's going to happen with the blitz. We'll see, though.
So you have to blitz this one, right? Because he can get a hundred off too. So you absolutely have to blitz this guy and you have to block this one. It's a full power there. You really want to hit him from the bottom, don't you? So I guess you want to put the ghoul in there and hit him up. But then I guess the ghoul could base the fall. So yeah, he pushes him down, gets the power. Oh yeah, he pushes him across. Yeah, okay, pushing him across is fine as well. Gets the stun, so there's just one scoring threat. I guess you could put him in front as well. Oh, rushes to go right in front. I think this isn't too hard, is it? 4-2, gets him out, blitz this, 3 plus handoff, and then like, what's that, a 5 plus pass? Maybe it's a 6 plus, no, maybe it's a 5. Uh, it can dodge through here, maybe, 3-2, three, three, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then pass there, maybe that's better. He needs to know how far he can pass, doesn't he? If you can pass from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think it's six squares, isn't it? I think it's six squares. So that's uh, that would be a six plus pass. So he's probably got to make it a. F well, this is a five plus catch, isn't it? Well, now I'm bamboozled. Oh he's, no, no, he's blitzing him. He's gonna. So he's gonna hand off to this one. And then this one is going to pass it to the, this guy and catch on a five. Or the two on the catch. Yeah, so he's got a he's got a four plus pass it and then five plus catch it. Because that's better than like doing a six plus pass. It's accurate. Rolls a four on the catch. Honestly, it's pro if you're going to do that, you're probably better off um, blitzing one of the people marking him, right? To make it a 4 plus cash. But um, anyway, I keep it at a 3 and a 4 is better than a 2 and a 5, right? But wow, that was, that was really close. That was really close. Well played by both. And uh, congratulations, Diamed. Under, under massive pressure with hardly any players. Versus those dark elves. Commiserations, Jonesy. So close to maybe even winning the game, right? Um, GG, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.